stubborn, rebellious people who probably to this day have cans of soup, bottled water in their garage, and, and all kinds of stuff because they right. stopped up for the Y2K. Right. When, as a man of God, I told y'all, what did we, y'all remember Y2K? Right. Remember what we did? We came in and we had a ball. Yes, yes we did. We partied like it was 1999. Amen. And it was. <laughs> and we had a And we, the clock struck 12, and it struck 12.01, and we were still here, Amen. and the lights were still on, and the electricity was still on, and there was not pandemonium and mayhem, and the computers didn't shut down, and your electric bill came in the mail just like it was promised. Hallelujah! Okay! Well. <laughs> Hell and soul and ghost. Same bill. So, everybody in here is blessed. God blesses you, I bless you. Amen. But today is your day of deliverance from ignorance. And I know that has a catchy rhyme to it, but it is a powerful principle of unlocking a God-sized blessing. Some of you are probably thinking that nothing has happened since I spoke about these next 52 days and the 52 weeks. But you don't even know how to recognize the blessings because you're so spoiled rotten to the abundance you already live in. But the time will come. Here's the harbinger. Here's the warning. The time will come when you will need a God-sized blessing and miracle. And hopefully you will not be found in the predicament that Ahab was in. You think that Ahab was just an evil person when you hear the name Ahab. Well, he was just a rep. Well, he was. Let me just tell you. When we are rebellious, we're no different. When you ignore me and the instruction that God gives me, you are taunting God just like Ahab. Hallelujah. See? Where's that going? Okay. Little Mariah had a birthday this week. She turned nine years old. She came in on Thursday evening with her usual. <laughs> I know. I love you too. And she pulled out a wad of cash. She thought Johnny needed to borrow a pen. <laughs> she got an envelope. I saw her fumbling through tens and fives and ones. And she fumbled and she fumbled, rising yes, until she found a $20 bill. Yes, sir. She got $50. Right, sir. Her time would have been $5. Yes, sir. She could have given a 10 yes, sir. and doubled the time. She got the best. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. God. The best offering. That she had. Okay. And she put it in an envelope. And she didn't wait till the offering plate. I'm sure she has watched many of you go up and say, Here, doctor. Right, and she put that little $20 offering in my hand. Um, yeah. Well, doctor, how could you take that from a little nine year old? That's like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like taking. Uh, the last little cake from a widow. Right. Yes. And, and her son. Right, their, their last meal. Right, That's like taking money from, 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 from Trina. She's been walking by... You, you better believe it! She's been walking and living by faith. Amen. And she has not lacked for one, for nothing. No. Absolutely yes. nothing. She drives a better car than I do. <laughs> you, can, you can have it. Sir. Thank you, my precious. <laughs> and that's not, that's just for now. You, yes, come on, come on, Dr. Because I know y'all said you. My trust is in Yahweh. I know that I, I have not given up hope, and, and, and 
and, and faith, then I'm, I'm going to have my nice car. I said, I sold the Mercedes. I sold, sold, sold my Cadillac. Amen. I sold a, a, a van. And I sold my favorite car, Brother Amen. Amen. Jaguar. My Jag, my black convertible Jag. And you let your son just run into the ground. It's going to run. the work. <laughs> you do care. He still has it. I still do. And I carried to said the other day, Dad, why did you give that jack away? I would have been happy with that car. I said, I would have been happy with that car. It's like a classic. Star Cat. <laughs> Amen. Okay, just even if I didn't believe that God did Come on, right, sir. The laws of reciprocal yes, giving yes. are in motion. The Bible says God reigns on the just and the unjust. So if he can be gracious and kind to unjust people, how much more will he be with somebody who dares to get in your face and tell you the truth and tell you, you guys, please don't, doctor, don't be cursing us. Don't be putting a curse. I'm not I'm trying to keep you from. Slap me, I told you that. That's why I'm, I'm on the phone texting people and on Facebook trying to get in. And they don't want to listen. I go, okay, well, there's only so much you can do. Amen. You can lead a horse to water, That's but right. you cannot Amen. make it drink. That's true. Come on. Okay. So little, little Mariah gave her, her special blessing. And I saw in a flash, I got a, a quick flash in my spirit about her future and the impact Hallelujah. that that seed will have in her future. I don't hear it. Because your seed is the only thing that you can send into the future. And it becomes a memorial before God. Amen. That's the word. And I saw, and it's funny because, because Raquel got up here and they, they started talking about some of the things that they, they, they uh, shared with their mom and, and grandmother. About the struggles that they had and the hardships and the, and, the, and the crazy stuff. And I said, Mariah will not have to go through what Victoria had to go through, yeah. what her mother had to go through, yeah. what her grandmother had to go through, yeah. and what her great-grandmother had to go through. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It stops here with this generation. Cease and desist. When Ahab questioned and pretty much taunted God, he was trying to, to deny the divine system of reward and punishment that Elijah represented. The prophet immediately responded to the king, to Ahab. This is the king. He's on the top. He's at the top. He said, as the Lord lives, the God of Israel. And he said, there will be no dew nor rain except at my bidding. Hallelujah. Dr. Don't curse us. Bless us. <laughs> I'm scared to tell you. There will be no. Now, you ain't got that kind of power. Yeah. I have that kind of crazy faith. Uh -huh. You can pray. You said you're going to bless. I am blessing you, but I am also praying. Okay, God, whatever you have to do to get their attention. If you end up in prison, it's a good thing because everybody, everybody finds God in prison. Everybody gets close to God in prison. Everybody gets in the Word in prison. Everybody has a come to Jesus leading. 1 Kings 17 and 1. And Elijah the Tishbite was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord of God of Israel, liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain for years, but at my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Sharif. And you know the story, how the Lord made provision 
for the prophet. I don't know if I'm at the river, at the brook Sharif, or if I'm in Zarephath, but all I know is that my God has made provision for me and my household. And my children. He truly has. Um, so then, verse 8, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain thee. A widow! So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gates of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called her and said, uh, Fetch me. I pray thee, a little water, a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, O oh, also, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, O oh, uh, the Lord thy God, as the Lord thy God liveth, I promise. I don't have a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little bit of oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I might go in and dress it for me and my son, that we might eat our last meal and die. Some of you don't realize, but the fact that a man of God got in your face pushed you to sow the uncommon seed saved your life. And Elijah said, fear not. And Dr. Thomas said, don't worry, be happy. Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. How? And here, and of course, let me go back to that, that um, documentary of Brother Swagger and his great men. The network that produced it, they were saying, well, of course, it was God and greed. Because the idea that a wealthy minister who has multi-million dollar homes and jets and Rolls Royces and what have you, and I have no problem with men who are at that level, that caliber. I have a problem when they lose focus. But the idea that they already have all these millions, half a million dollars coming in to their ministry every single day. And that they're asking the widow woman to sow a thousand dollar seed or a five thousand dollar seed or to give. And many times they've emptied out their saving. But it's not about the transaction between a man and a little widow. It's about the transaction that's taking place in the supernatural. Amen. That when you step out in faith and you yes. sow, you, yes. you do something uncommon Amen. at the instruction of a man of God. That God then turns around and gives you a God-sized blessing. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Every single time. Yes, sir. Every single time. And she went, verse 15, and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and her house did eat many days. I believe it was until the famine was over. She lacked for nothing. In fact, I remember when Vernessa said, oh, oh my gosh, Dr. Thomas, that lady who's housing you and your family, during this fire, yes, she's going to be blessed. Amen. She will never lack for anything. Amen. And it came to, everybody say it, it came to pass. Amen. Because these things, what I've been prophesying and speaking, will come to pass. Are coming to pass. Yes. And people who, who have played with this relationship, they might be watching on Facebook or on YouTube this morning. And they have messed around with this contract or agreement between a man of God, a deliverer, that God has put in their path. 
And they're sitting there wallowing in their mess going, why does it God? Well, when was the last time that you met? I've contacted so many of people. I mean, I keep, I keep on and keep on. And sometimes I go, why don't I just give up on these plates? Man. Because I just have a pastor's heart. I have a shepherd's heart. that I hate to see people fall by the wayside. And it went according to the saying of Elijah. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah spake. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, you know the story, that he fell dead. He had no breath in him. Said unto Elijah, What have I done to thee? Because here's what's happened. See? See, uh, and, and let me just remind you, I'm almost finished, listen, Psalm, in Psalm uh, 37, 25, I have been young and am now old, but I have never seen a righteous man abandoned nor his children begging for bread. Amen. That scripture is real with this man of God. Amen. God does not abandon the righteous nor his children in their time of famine. And in drought, God comes to the, uh, when drought comes to the world, God arranges for sustenance for his people, for his, for his servants. See, God is ready to deliver everyone here this morning from, from our ignorant mindsets and mistakes. See, God makes provision for, for his prophets no matter how many people are obedient or not. Amen. No matter how many people. It's funny, we haven't mentioned the $5,000 seed. But it's in the bulletin. God told him to list your names. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to embarrass you, but God, that's what God told me to do. 